What do I call you? Do I call you Ingve? Do I call you Mr. Malmsteen? How do you like to be called? Uh, English, fine. Well, you call me. You can call me Roger. Well, Roger uh, slash Ingve. <laughs> uh, congratulations on your new album, Parabellum. It's interesting to me to hear that you wrote it as a collection of 10 songs rather than going, this is the single or anything like that. Did you know outright that you want to write a concept record? No, not at all. Uh, this entire, the entire way, way I, I have the luxury of a own a mobile studio and that be, that I don't have anybody breathing down my throat, breathing down my neck saying like, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. You know, I can, I have the luxury of doing whatever I feel like. But the thing is that I didn't even have a plan. I didn't have a concept, nothing like that, because I just wanted to make music. Okay. And so whatever came out, it was like a magic moment where it kind of just happened. That's what I used. You know, I didn't, I mean, I could, if I if you wanted to, I could sit here and write this song right now. I could write a country western song. Right. No problem. But I don't like doing that. I like to get music to come to me spontaneously and it's all like a magic moment almost right do you actually write out the music in any form or is it all in your head when you're composing both there's both but I, most of the time what i do is as soon as i get a really good idea like or some theme or melody or whatever i record it and i make like a like a rough of it and i listen to it in the car and I build on it like that. I sing along with it. And I think about it. And I add this a different tempo here. You know, so the initial idea is very spontaneous. But then I kind of like detail it afterwards. You know what I mean? And also, obviously, the solos are completely improvised. But but the, the songs and the melodies and the themes and stuff are obviously written. And but but I allow them to like kind of like build themselves. A bit, you know, because I don't. The last thing I want to do is to go, oh, I wonder if this is going to be acceptable or this. And I don't think like that. I, you know, music has to be pure. It has to be art. It's art, really. So it is. I've read that you don't like doing take after take, that you're kind of a few takes, and if it doesn't work out, then you move on. Was that the case on this album as well? Yeah. And even though I had all the time in the world, I, I you know, I didn't want to do take up take take on solos because the solos have to be spontaneous whereas we you know certain parts like written parts yeah you can do it more than one take because it's a written part it's a specific written part that's mm -hmm. okay but for the solos which is improvised then i don't want to do over and over because that that just makes it worse well, I appreciate that this and your last few albums, it's been you on all the instruments and all the vocals. What exactly was it that led you to realize, hey, it's time to take everything into my own hands? <laughs> because I did it since I was eight years old. My, my, my grandfather was a drummer, my brother was a drummer, and my uncle built a recording studio. So I had it, I go in there and I could write a song and we play all the instruments. And if I had it like a, what call it called like backing band or whatever a band they weren't always there so i would just roll tape and i would play all instruments to write the songs and in fact the tape that i sent to the guitar player magazine in 1982 that's me on all bass drums keyboards vocals everything so this is nothing new this is not new uh it's just that for a while there i hired people i gave them a paycheck to, to play a part or sing a part but i felt i feel very good about just kind of like locking myself into the studio and just not worry about what other people say or think or whatever. Not that I did before, but <laughs> not, 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 not even to have them in there. You know, it's good to me. It's it works. I work pretty much like, say, like a writer or a painter or something, like an author. Yeah. yeah I, I don't, yeah. Hey, dude, do you want to paint the half, this half of the painting? I can paint this half of the painting. I, I don't work like that. Well, you know, were you or like Mozart or Bach? But with Bach, we wrote the Brandenburg Concerto. The second cellist, he wouldn't say, "Hey, can I play F sharp here instead of F?" <laughs> you know. So I, I used to do this little joke. Like if there was like somebody came in, they count you, and they started saying, "Hey, you want to try this? Want to try this?" I said, "Wow, that's a great idea. Keep that for your solo." <laughs> Uh, but, but but the thing is, you know, I made solo albums since 1984, and it's just, you know, if I hired someone to do something, or if I did it myself, no difference. Well, were you always good enough as a drummer and good enough 
on keyboards to be playing your own stuff? It was just a, hey, it's easier if I have the other people do it on the album? Drummer, definitely. Maybe not keyboard player. I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm not, I couldn't play the really hard parts. In fact, all the keyboard, quote unquote, parts on this record are done with the guitar set. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. All the fast parts are actually done on the guitar. It's crazy. Well, you know, I used that, 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 that program called a contact program. Yeah. And which is, it has uh, uh, all the pianos and cellos and violins and everything. Why? Everything is done on the guitar set. There's no keyboard. <laughs> well, I love the photo of you with just the whole room of the early 70s Stratocasters. And I've also seen a great piece of video footage. I think it was in the movie A Headbanger's Journey, where you just saw that you had the same sports car, like 10 of them. Are there any things that you collect like that besides guitars and sports cars? Yeah, that would be Ferrari, so. <laughs> specifically. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually driving one right now. I'm, I'm completely nuts about it. I'm a very passionate Ferrari owner. And I collect watches and I collect guns. Um, that's it. Have they you don't ever... have a lot of amplifiers and a lot of guitars. I don't even really collect them anymore. I got like 70 amps, 70, 70 Marshall amps and like I don't know, a couple of guitars. So I don't really, I don't buy them anymore or, or anything like that. Well, when it comes to other instruments that you're playing, because now you're doing everything on your own, do you have the same bass 12 times, anything like that? Uh, yeah. Well, no, I have, uh, I have a lot of basses. I've got everything from jazz to precision to, to even the Rickenbackers. You know, I got some really weird basses too, but, but uh, there are a lot of acoustic guitars, got all that stuff. Very big. If I, I mean, I don't have only strats. I have less balls and ESP thirty five, flying V's, SG. I got a lot of them. I got some crazy guitars from Transgaming. I got a Brian May guitar. I got an Uli guitar. I got a Steve Ice guitar. They all gave me their guitars. Wow. Um, okay. It, so I, I have, I have, I have a lot of cool guitars. Like Richard Blackmore's guitar. I got, I got uh, the one of the earliest. Actually, in one of the eight first Stratocasters ever built. Wow. First month, first year. Yeah, March 54. Very, very rare. That, I don't really, I have some really good friends in, you know, in the vintage guitar business. And, uh, you know, they, I, I don't really buy them anymore. Because <laughs> I have, A, I have a lot of them, and B, I, I just do other things. I the Malmsteen Strats are really, really good. Right. I was surprised to hear that you do have other guitars. There's an, an old quick story is a friend of mine met you at a signing at House of Guitars in Rochester. And he, yeah, brought, yeah, I know that place. he brought a guitar for you to sign and you signed it, play Fender on his guitar. Yeah, I do the old joke. Because if it's a Strat, I play, or I play loud. If it's an Ibanez, I, or I play Fender or another model. But it's just, a, it's just a little joke. You know, everybody should have their own guitar. I'm not knocking it, you know. They're all great. And then related to your new album, you kind of doing everything yourself. I believe you went independent, at least in the States, for the seventh sign album. Do you like being your own record company or at least leading the record company, making the album yourself and then telling everyone what to do? Well... The thing is that even when I was signed to the so-called big labels, I did what I wanted to do then too, anyway. So, uh, but it was a, it was sort of like a thing that happened not just to me but to everybody. Like in 1991, uh, right around then, when when the nut to grunge thing came, they, no, nobody in America wanted to know, you know. So I started signing with Japanese companies and stuff like this. But then uh, I think it was 2008, I formed Rising Force Records, which is still active. Mm -hmm. And now I'm working with Master Label Group, which is awesome. And I'm, I have a different label in Japan too, King Record. So, but that, we're, we're doing. I, I mean, basically, I'm licensing the album, so, so I'm, 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 I supply the master, and uh, they license the master. You know, so that, that's how it works. Whereas back in the day, you you would be signing a record deal, and they would own the master, which is not so good. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you are where you want to be creatively and business-wise in general. Man, it's almost there. 
Okay. Well, three quick questions and to keep you on time here. And the first thing is, one of my favorite things that you ever worked on was the Hearing Aid single for Stars. Was that a pleasant experience for you? Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I, I loved all the guys there. It was it was great. It was very, very 80s, you know, everybody hanging out, drinking. And uh, so I was actually on a European tour when Ronnie contacted me. And me and Ronnie go way back. So I said, okay, I'll come over. I flew over. I was jet lagged. And, uh, and I, I came in and I said, okay, when is my turn? Well, Brad Gillis and George Lynch first, and then you. Okay, good. Okay, around one hour, two hours, three hours, four, four, four and a half hours. I go, what's going on? Uh, Brad Gillis, still, he's finishing up. Okay, all right, good. Four and a half hours. <laughs> and then George Lynch came in. I spent a few hours too. I can't remember how long. And it was my turn. I did not, I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying that that's what I remember. That they did great stuff, but... Uh, anyway, so but I went in there from the point I walked in the studio and walked out of the studio was twenty minutes. Wow! Just like what yeah. I said, you don't like to do a lot of takes and you get it done. Huh? No, but what happened? <laughs> Ronnie had sent me the chord progression. He sent me this. You only sold on this chord progression, okay? A minor F, you know? Yeah. Whatever it was, something like that. And that so so I, I that was it, you know? Roll the tape, guys. Come on. <laughs> And then uh, next thing here, I love that first Alcatraz album. I know it wasn't the happiest time in your life, but do you look back on that album fondly? I think it's a great record because, you know, it's funny how that happened because I was Steeler thing, which was only kind of like a, you know, temporary thing, really. Anyway, it was a lot of people came to see me, which was really cool. I was just a kid, 19 years old. And uh, uh, Phil Mark from the UFO came over and said, hey... Come over to my house tomorrow. We talk about you know reforming you for we're out of business or something. So oh, wow, cool. So next morning I wake up, I get a phone call from what became Alcatraz. They say, "Well, we hey, you're hot. You need to come down and try out." So so I went to the that rehearsal room first, right? And uh, I walked in and I yeah you know, played a little bit and then I asked them, "So what songs you got?" Oh, we don't have any songs. Okay. Uh, what do you? Oh, well, you know we have this whatever that on. Okay, so they go, you got the gig, you got the gig. I'm like, <laughs> hey, yeah, but let, let me think about it. Like a little cocky kid, you know? Yeah. Because I went, had to go see Phil. So I went to Phil's house, and he was a love, he was a sweetheart, but he was a little bit, you know, a little bit maybe lost at the time. And so I called Alcatraz from Phil's house. Was, what, it wasn't called Alcatraz then, but those people. Right. And I basically said, all right, I join your thing, but we, I write the songs, number one. Number two, we get a new drummer. So we auditioned thousand drummers until I, I was happy, you know. Actually, they wanted to feel, uh, they wanted um, Clive Burr from Iron Maiden, mm. which he was a great, great guy, but he wasn't the right drummer, I don't think. But I liked the drummer from, from Alice Cooper's band, and uh, they said, no, but he's famous, okay? Well, you form a band with him, and I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I was really kind of running the show without supposed to be i wasn't supposed to be and uh then when i went on tour we went to japan and they gave me a solo deal on the spot they liked what i did so i started recording that and we we're on tour with that with actress uh, we got into a little fifth there and i left uh and i finished my solo album and went on tour again with my whole thing. so and the That's rest is happened. history, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then the last question I have, I couldn't figure this out. What's your favorite show on television these days? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have one, actually. Uh, I don't really. Are you a comedy guy or a documentary guy? I like, I like comedies. I like uh, documentaries. I like horror. I like sci-fi. I like a lot of things. Well... I don't have. A, I don't. I don't really follow series. But it's, that's too much uh, work. <laughs> I, I just like movies. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, Ingve, Roger, whatever your name is, thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to seeing you live <laughs> in New York whenever that is, man. Thank you. All right, thank you, brother. Outrocast. <laughs>